Good morning, church family. It is 7.30 here in Glendale, Arizona, and I'm Brother Ron, and this is Thankful Thursday. Hope you're having a blessed week, and uh, it's good to see you on with me this morning. Uh, what a wonderful uh, day we have. What a beautiful, the weather, beautiful weather. It's starting to change, starting to cool off a little bit, so I'm glad about that. Uh, just to give you a little update, uh, today marks uh, two weeks post-surgery on my knee, and uh, I'm seeing the doctor later to, this morning, and hopefully all the staples get to come out, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm on the road to recovery. Uh, therapy has been going well. Uh, I've been trying to stay off of it, but getting around here and there, so thank you for your prayers. Uh, they are working, and uh, I appreciate you for that. I've got a a couple announcements before we get into our word this morning. I want to remind you that this Sunday is our dedication service. It's one service, 10 a.m., and uh, you don't want to miss out. It's going to be dedicating the building, dedicating our lives, you know, to the work of the Lord. And uh, there's a lot of special guests that are going to be there. And hopefully you've invited someone to join you as well. Uh, for this special event. So mark it on your calendar. This Sunday, it's one service, 10 a.m. All right, get there early though, so you can get a seat because uh, the nine and 11 o'clock services are gonna be fighting for the same seat, uh, but there's plenty of seats there. But get there early, uh, 10 o'clock Sunday. Well, let's get into our word this morning. Uh, we're gonna conclude the book of Colossians. We finally made it to the very end, and a lot of the end of Paul's letters are pretty much greetings and final instructions. Last Thursday, we looked at uh, the exhortation to pray for one another, and uh, now we're going to see as he kind of gives a little bit of a call out to some of the workers that are there with him while he's in prison, and I have a question to, or a comment for you before we read it. Have you ever gone through something and it was comforting to have somebody there with you? Although the person couldn't, you know, uh, do anything about the circumstance, just the fact that they were there with you brought comfort knowing that you weren't alone uh, as you were walking through whatever situation or circumstance you may have been going through. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of us have experienced that at one point in our lives. And we're gonna see that Paul is going to share how he's walking through this, being in prison, but he's not alone. And of course, we all know we have Jesus, but it's always nice to have that tangible presence, somebody who's going to be there physically and to bring us encouragement, to, to walk with us, to remind us. And so uh, this is what Paul's going to talk a little bit about as we conclude Colossians chapter 4. We're going to pick up in verse 7. So if you have your Bibles, uh, I'm just going to read and then I'll pause like I normally do and do a little commentary as we go through this. Tychias will give you a full report about how I am getting along. He is a beloved brother and faithful helper who serves with me in the Lord's work. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, to let you know how we are doing and to encourage you. Remember, Paul's situation is he's in prison. He doesn't know the outcome, but yet his concern is for the Christians at Colossae. And so not only is he writing this letter, but he's going to send it with somebody who's going to give them a physical or verbal update on what's happening and encourage them because that's his sole purpose. He wants to make sure they're encouraged. Um... I am also sending Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, one of your own people. He and Tychias will tell you everything that's happening here. Now, Onesimus, it's, it's, it's interesting about him. Um, his life is a story of redemption. Uh, in fact, he's a slave who stole from his master and then took off. Uh, to Rome, and he encounters Paul. Paul shares the gospel with him. He comes to know Christ, and now he's a faithful servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's serving there with Paul. And Paul will even say that he's his, his spiritual son because he has led him to the Lord. And we can find this story in the book of Philemon because Paul is going to write a letter to Philemon while he's in the same prison, 
and talk to Philemon and say, hey, remember Onesimus, who was your slave? Well, now he's a brother in Christ. His life has been turned around and he, was, he wasn't useful to you before, but now he's useful to both of us because of what Christ has done in his life. And it's a beautiful story of what God can do even when we've made poor choices, even when we've messed up. God is able to take those pieces and make a masterpiece out of it. And so I would encourage you uh, later today, read, it's only one chapter, read the letter to Philemon and you'll find out about Onesimus. Let's continue. Uh, Art Articus, who is in prison with me, sends you his greetings and so does Mark, Barnabas' cousin. As you were instructed before, make Mark welcome if he comes your way. I want to pause and talk about Mark a little bit as well. In the book of Acts, we, we, hear a, we read about a story or an incident, not a story, but an incident where Paul and, and uh, Barnabas, you know, they had gone out on a missionary trip, the first missionary trip, and they're out there taking the gospel. And they had Barnabas' cousin with them, uh, Mark. And uh, midway, somewhere along the way, he deserts them. He decides, hey, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm going to go home. And so now they're getting ready to go on their second missionary journey. And Barnabas wants to bring Mark along. And Paul says, no, no. Uh, he deserted us. And no, I don't, I don't, I don't want him to go with us. And uh, Barnabas, you know, again, made the argument why they should bring him. And it became such a contentious uh, situation that Barnabas and Paul actually split. And Barnabas went on. I mean, they, they both continued to take the gospel. But Barnabas took Mark with him and he, he went on a missionary journey. And then Paul would end up taking Silas with him. But come full circle and see how God is able again to take uh, and redeem and use those that maybe you failed, maybe you gave up, maybe you quit one time along the way, maybe you weren't faithful, but now God has got a hold of you and now you're committed and the opportunities present themselves for you to be able to serve once again. And that's what Mark did. Mark comes full circle with Paul and Paul, he's there with Paul now encouraging him and, and, uh, Paul says, hey, I'm going to send Mark with you and you welcome him. In fact, in another letter, he writes about, hey, can you send Mark with me to me because he has been so helpful to me. So it, again, a beautiful story of redemption, uh, God being able to turn what the enemy intended for evil for his good. Amen. And in fact, another fun fact is that John Mark is the same guy who wrote the gospel of Mark. That's, that's the same guy that Paul is talking about here. Uh, let's continue. Jesus, the one we call Justice, also sends his greetings. These are the only Jewish believers among my co-workers. They are working with me here for the kingdom of God. And I want you to pay attention to this. And what a comfort they have been. That's, that's the part that really I wanted to focus in on was what a comfort they have been. I know sometimes we... We don't have words to say to people that are walking through a valley. Maybe they've lost a loved one and it's, you want to always find the right words to say and, and they fall short, even if you do have the right words. But sometimes just being there, just being there alongside them, just being there to, that is brings comfort to them. And for Paul, just having these men of God around him while he's walking through this, while he's in that prison brought comfort and encourage him encouragement to him so I, I, I want to encourage you with this that you may think what significance do I play in the kingdom of God what what impact do I really make I'm not a preacher I'm not a teacher I'm not you know evangelist I'm not brother sister can I tell you that just being you allowing the Holy Spirit whether it's to just be there in silence alongside someone who is going through it praying for them and saying, hey, you know what? If you need anything, I am here. That brings comfort. That brings uh, encouragement to the body of Christ. So, And that's very important. So don't dismiss what God can do through your life. Amen? Well, let's finish, okay? Epaphras, 
a member of your own fellowship and a servant of Christ Jesus sends you his greetings. He always prays earnestly for you, asking God to make you strong and perfect. Epaphras is the prayer warrior. Fully confident that you are following the whole will of God, I can assure you that he prays hard for you and also for the believers in Laodicea and Hyperlis, Hy Hy Hyropolis. That's a hard word to say. And then here's another person you might know. Luke, the beloved doctor, sends his greetings, and so does Demas. Luke is the one who wrote the Gospel of Luke. Uh, please give my greetings to our brothers and sisters at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church that meets in her house. After you read this letter, pass it on to the church at Laodicea so they can read it too. And you should read the letter I wrote to them. And say to Agrippas, be sure to carry out the ministry the Lord gave you. And then Paul says, here is my greeting in my own handwriting, Paul. Remember my chains. May God's grace be with you. So Paul is, Paul didn't write his own letters. He actually had a scribe that would uh, kind of take down everything that Paul would say. But at the end, he would actually say, this is why he says, here is my greeting in my own handwriting. So he would sign it himself so that they knew that it was authentic, that it was coming from Paul. Well, we concluded the book of Colossians. We're going to pray. And again, I want to encourage you. Maybe there's somebody that God has placed in your heart that you haven't seen for a while. And he's telling you to reach out to them or maybe to pray for them. Why don't you do that today? and watch the impact that it has. It may not be evident uh, right at the moment, but when we get into heaven, you're going to see that the little things that we did had great impact for the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and we praise you this morning for this beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for your reminder of God, how you are able to take and, and take the broken pieces of our lives and make them into a beautiful masterpiece that brings you glory and honor. Lord, that we are important in your body. We are important no matter what role we play, God. Each of us has, you have a plan and a purpose for us. Help us to realize that today and walk in that, God, as we yield ourselves to you, Holy Spirit, to work through us. Help us to be sensitive to your voice today, to minister to those around us, to minister to those in the body of Christ and those outside of the body of Christ that need to hear the good news of the gospel message. Lord, I pray you would bless my brothers and sisters today. Be with them. Provide for their needs. Touch their bodies physically, Lord. Bring healing, God. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone says, amen. All right. Well, let's see who's joined us. My cat is over there. I got to make sure. Good morning, Brother Ed. Good morning, Christine, RJ, and Georgia. Sister Sylvia, good morning. Good morning, Mary. Thank you, Sister Sylvia. Thank you all for that wish me a happy birthday. Yesterday was my birthday. I turned 58. I can't believe 58. I remember when my dad was 58 and I thought he was old. Now I'm 58 and I'm like, I'm not old. I'm still young at heart. And uh, early happy birthday to you, Sister Sylvia, because I know it's your birthday tomorrow. Uh, Mary and Joe, good morning. Good to see you on. Good morning, Mary Ferguson. Ivy, good morning. Alfredo, good morning. Sister V, good morning. Francis Renee, good morning. Brother Al, good morning. Sister D, good morning. Ramona, good morning. Stacy, good morning. Rose, good morning. Lori, good morning. Colette, good morning. Janice, good morning. Brother Andrew, good morning. Connie, good morning. Sister Eva, good morning. Cheryl, good morning. Peggy, good morning. And that's everybody who's joined us this morning. So I hope you have a blessed day. Remember, Sunday, I hope it finds you in church on Celebration Sunday, 10 a.m., okay? Uh, have a blessed day. Remember to be thankful. I'm thankful for you guys. Tune in tomorrow with Pastor Tim and uh, Friday Socks. God bless you.